Okay, I would like to say hello to everyone that's listening in. And let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on another day's journey. Bless those that's out there listening in. Heavenly Father, those in the hospital, those in prison, bless that they continue to understand your word. The teaching of your Holy Spirit is everywhere. Heavenly Father, continue to bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go to the book of John. Now, you know, we have shifted over into baptism, which is connection to dealing with when Jesus said, when he told his disciples that you will be baptized uh, with the baptism I am baptized with. And he also mentioned about drinking their cup as well. So we're working on this baptism now. So that letting you know the important when Jesus said you will, you shall be baptized with the baptism, baptism I am baptized with. So the preacher teach that baptism has no salvation, the water baptism, because that's what Jesus was baptized in water. So we finna uh, address baptism even further. So if you hear any minister, or anybody, even the one that you're up under, ever preached, uh, when they're baptized and say, well, water doesn't necessarily save you or have, then that's a false teacher, okay? That's exactly what you got, okay? So let's go, <clears throat> third chapter of John. It says here, verse one, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Got to be born again. So let's, verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time <clears throat> into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I'm going to stop right there. I don't know how much plainly you can get. Jesus mentioned water, and he mentioned what? The Spirit. What did John the Baptist say? He baptized with water. water. But the one that you, he cannot wear or bear, he going to baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost. Okay? Which is the Spirit. So God, Jesus, who is God, is the Word of God letting you know Water is part of the salvation. It's a command. So how could you mess this up? <laughs> I, I just don't understand this teaching that's going around. And you people are following and then believing this and supporting it. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, Lord have mercy, have mercy on my soul. Okay, let me. So he made it clear. Okay, the blood come like you know, he already know he's gonna shed his blood because in John, first chapter five, uh first John, fifth chapter, verse eight, it's gonna clearly say they had the blood in there. So we already know about the blood. So now, verse six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So he let him know, born of a woman, that's flesh. He said, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. See, when Jesus was born, he was made flesh, but it was the Holy Ghost in Mary that the word was made flesh. But he was born a quickening spirit. Okay, you find that in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. So as we keep teaching, we'll go over that. In due time, I had went over it briefly at one time, I remember. But you read that chapter, and you'll see that. He became a quickening spirit. You got the first Adam, he's got the second Adam, okay? Jesus is the second Adam. Quickening spirit. 
The first Adam was what of the flesh. Okay. All right. <clears throat> verse 8. No, verse 7, rather. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Not should, maybe, must be born again. And he showed you how to be born again with water and other spirit. And we're going to see a story that I'm going to read and ask here shortly. And we're going to show you how the Holy Spirit obeyed the word of God because they are one. How could you get this so wrong? Verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listen, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it's coming, and where it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Why? Because we led by the Spirit. It's not your leading, and not your thoughts, but the will of God and the Spirit leads you. So let's look at Galatians 5. I already got it here in this Bible. It's like King James Version. It doesn't matter. But fifth chapter 25, it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. For it's an if. You're not in the spirit, you're in the flesh, then prayer, flesh don't profit you nothing. You're either going to go to heaven or hell. Flesh is not going to heaven. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So let's go to I'm going to look at also John 4th chapter uh, 24. Let's see what it says. 4.24. Now remember, before I read this verse, remember what um, Nicodemus said to Jesus. Uh, remember he had said he's a, um, it was said that well, actually he was a Pharisee. He was also a ruler of the Jews. He was a ruler of the Jews. That was Nicodemus. Well, if you look, look at that first verse again. So, now I'm going to show you what Jesus said here. Uh, and he was talking, he was just at the, the, dealing with the woman at the well. And uh, here Jesus, I'm going I'm to read 22 to 24. So I'm going to change that. 22, John, the fourth chapter, 22. Uh, and we back that up, 21 to 24. I think it's important to get everything that Jesus said here. So he's dealing with the woman at the well, okay? It says here, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Okay, he's making it clear. A place, a particular place. Think about it, because Jesus, God is in heaven. He's in heaven. Okay, so he's letting them know. Ye worship, ye know not what? Let them know. You have no clue who you worship. We, and here he said, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Jesus made it clear. But everybody has to go through Jesus. Jesus clearly said, no man come to the Father but by him. If you don't have the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ's word, there's no way you can get to heaven. If you're not baptized in water and receive the Holy Ghost, but Jesus shed his blood, you're not going to heaven. I got to be bold with that. And not me, it's the word of God. And we need to take this serious. This is dealing with people's salvation when you're preaching and teaching this. It's not my saying. Say, so there's other Jews. You're not born a Jew. You are physically born in fact. You was a Gentile. And Gentile does nothing but dealing with the devil. Even when I read that I read in Galatians, I mean in 1 Corinthians 10 chapter, the thing that the Gentile did when they're dealing with tables and the cup, it is worshiping the devil. Period. So how you become a Jew is in the heart and through Christ, not in the flesh, not in the letter. Okay? So that's how we adopted in through the promise that he made to Abraham, that seed, which is that one seed, and that's Jesus Christ. Verse 23. But the hour will come, and now is when the true worshiper, now he's saying, Jesus letting you know the true worshipers. And now is the hour coming, and now is. See, Jesus is making it 
letting you know now that I was coming because he remember in Gethsemane, he said now the hour he was dealing with that hour he said now it's coming he already proclaiming that that the true worshiper which is in him and what he did in the flesh to become a true worshiper of the Jew because that's where it's coming through the promise that he made But the hour coming, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. So he's seeking such to worship him. The word. Jesus made it clear. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's go back to that verse that I read in Galatians 5.25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Paul is letting us know that. Paul is addressing that. Who also had the Holy Ghost in him. How can we miss? How can we go off so bad on this? Let's go to the story of Acts. We're going to go to the, to the eunuch. Dressing the eunuch. Okay, let's get this story together. Okay, so now here, we're dealing with the eunuch. And I'm going to start with uh, the 8th chapter, and we're going to... Actually, I'm going to do a verse or so here uh, in the eighth chapter, then we're gonna to go to verse twenty-six. So let's let's dress just a scripture or two here. Here it said, let's look at verse five, eight chapter, verse five. It said, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now Samaria was where that Samaritan woman, when Jesus, when I just read out of John, he was dealing with a Samaritan woman. When she was talking about water, he said he's the living water. Read that story. John chapter chapter 4. That was a Samaritan. Okay? So, now this Philip, it all depends on if you're saying he's the Philip as an apostle, because there was an apostle named Philip. And then also there was the name Philip that the people chose the, the, the when the, the, the apostles said, okay, picks so many uh, to 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 uh, serve the tables because they were complaining. And there, there was one of them named Philip, and you can find that in chapter 6 of Acts, that story. When they told them, you look at chapter 6 of Acts, it tells them, the apostle told them to serve, to minister them. He picked some people to, to help deal with the table because they want to keep continuing to preach the word of God. And one of them they picked was called Philip. So verse 5, you'll see that. Okay? I don't want to go through all that. I just want you to know. So there is two Phillips. You got the Philip that was chosen by the people that the apostles told them to pick. So one, they picked several, and one of them named was Philip. Then he also had an apostle named Philip. So there was two Philip. So the one that I'm reading here now, uh, not addressing as far as which Philip we're dealing with, but both had the Holy Ghost in, it, in them. Some have taught that is the Philip that they chose because if you read the story, it's a continuation. And that's the one I'm looking at then being that Philip. Okay, so just so maybe we say, well, you had an apostle named Philip. Well, it's just true, but this person was named Philip as well. Okay, so as I was saying, verse 5, chapter 8. Verse 5, it said, Then Philip went down, I'm going to read it again, to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Then let's skip down to verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the thing concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. After they preached the word of God, they were baptized. In other words, once they received the word of God, if they stopped right there, why wouldn't they, they couldn't just be saved right there after they preached the word of God? Preach the word of Jesus to them. If baptizing or baptism has nothing to do with salvation, so why even baptize? If once he preached Jesus and they heard the name of the Lord Jesus by name, why didn't he stop right then and say, "Now you're saved"? Because they're doing what God said do, 
and you want to go around telling people you don't have to be baptized. It's not part. It's nowhere in scripture where it says you don't have to be. But I'm still going to show where you, yes, you do. So since they accepted Jesus by saying they believed, they heard his name, his name. They heard it. They believed. So why would they baptize him? If that's what you believe. So they were baptized because it's a command. So now let's go on to verse 26 concerning the eunuch. Here it says here, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Desert. We talking place don't even have any water. Ah. I've been in the desert, saw the Arabia. Nothing but saying I can see. Now, this is how the power of God is going to show you that it's a command to be baptized in water. Now, he's in the desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, and a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now we're dealing with the worship now. You're looking for true worshiper. Was returning and sitting on his chariot read, read uh, Isaiah the prophet. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip. Who? Then the spirit said unto Philip. Spirit spoke. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. So the spirit is what we're dealing with, going to lead you and guide you. He blows like the wind that I read about what Jesus was saying. So he's doing what the spirit tells him to do because the spirit of God knows. That's why he's something to your comforter, to teach you, to guide you, to lead you. So he obeyed in the spirit of God. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand it thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So we already see Philip already preached the word of Jesus before and they were baptized. So yes, God sent, he sent, that's why he said, go to all the world. He told his apostles that. But then that's where we as ministers are also, if you've been chosen as with the disciples or whatever you want to call yourself, you have to stay within the word of the teaching that was taught to them. They already put it out. It's already out. We're just reiterating it. That's it. Nothing new. In verse 32, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb unto uh, a lamb dumb before the sheep, his shear. So open he not his mouth. And it said, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? See, he had no clue. That's why he wanted to get understanding. And God, the Spirit of God sent Philip because Philip understand the procedure when it comes to salvation. Okay, so he's going to break it down to this unit as well, as far as when it's come to this, to understanding the scripture. So since he didn't quite understand, so he's going to break it down for him. They said, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So he let him know that's Jesus who he's talking about. So he preached Jesus to him. So since he preached Jesus to him, why was he not saved at that point? Hmm? No, he could have stopped and just said, okay, I will preach Jesus to you, believe, okay. That's all you need. 
then the person said, well, you should be. No, not should be baptized in water. What's the purpose if you don't believe it? What's the purpose of doing it? I need doing nothing extra having them do my salvation. Just like this. Ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. That's why I said this and go straight to hell. The bread and the crack of juice, whatever, wait for whatever. They go straight to hell. Ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. Period. But yet, y'all want to push this stuff. Okay. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. Here we go. They came to a certain water. <laughs> The scripture is so clear. <laughs> Boy. And the eunuch says, See, here is water. What do it hinder me to be baptized? So now, if the eunuch doesn't understand Isaiah, so he shouldn't even know anything about water being baptized. So why? Because Philip taught him and preached to him in reference to baptism in water. That's why he said, Look, here's what. Now, guess where they're at? In the desert. God provided. In the desert. So there's no excuse. So somebody said, well, there wasn't no water around. Because you don't believe, don't think God can't provide water. He let it rain all the time. Man don't make water. Everywhere in the world, you're going to get some water. No excuse. Here we go. So now he's saying here, I'm going to read it again. And as they went on their way, then came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What do it hinder me to be baptized? And that's what people need to say when they say they ain't been baptized they're on the sick bed. You need to say, Here, give me some water. Here is water. Baptize me because I believe. If you're going to die, you might as well going to die on the earth and then die in hell. And not die in hell. You're going to live forever in hell. Yeah, he's going to get away with death. He gonna, death going to destroy. So there won't be no more dying. <laughs> But you'll be in the wrong place, living forever. Okay, let's get this right. In verse 37, and Philip said, If thou believest, here he went down, here we go. If thou believest with all thy heart. Now he telling him after he said, Here, there, here is water. But then he's gonna say, that if thou believest. Not because it's water alone, but believing everything what Jesus said as far as the command when it comes to baptism. When he told his disciples, can you be baptized with the baptized, baptism I am baptized with? How was Jesus baptized? Was he baptized in water, yes or no? Yes. So follow Jesus. And he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Both. How can you go wrong? Read it again. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. In other words, thou mayest be your worthy to be baptized in water and accept Christ because you believe. That's why, uh, let me finish reading this verse. We're going to go to another verse real quick. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, go back to Mark 16 and 16. I'm going to bring that up again. Actually, we're going to do 15 and 16. Mark chapter 16, 15, 16 verse. And he said unto them, Go, ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus is the gospel. So he preached the gospel unto that man. So now what Paul, since he preached the gospel, what's left? Water. Because he already preached, which is baptism. He already preached the gospel. Then he said here, he said, preach and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. The gospel, which is Jesus. So once they preach the gospel, why they don't stop right there? Because Jesus is making it clear himself. So nobody can say, well, uh, Jesus never said it. Uh, this is doing the talking. He that believe it, this is who's talking. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's what he said. He that believe it, he that what? Believe it. Go back to that verse. Matter of fact, I'm going to have both verses up there. I'm going to have verse 16 of, of, of Mark. 16 and 16, and then I'm going to have also the verse 37 of uh, Acts 8, chapter 37. I'm going I'm to have both of them at the same time. I want y'all to look at this. 
So, and I'm gonna read one and read the. I'm gonna just read what Philip. Let's look at Philip here again first. He said on, on Acts. It said, "If Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, and it said thou mayest." Okay, he said thou mayest, and he answered and said, "I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God." Then we're looking at Mark sixteen and sixteen. He that believe it, this is God talking. This is Jesus, the Holy Spirit. He that believe it and is baptized. See, the baptism was mentioned already on the water when Paul, when uh, Philip was talking to him. So he getting both. Philip understand. He said, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe it not shall be down. That's what I said. That's why he said, if you don't believe, you shall be down because you don't believe that you should be baptized in water. And also believe in me because I command you to be baptized. This is the this is this is the problem with a lot of teaching. And then we're in, in verse thirty eight. We back we back the book of Acts, eight chapter verse thirty eight. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. So he commanded to stand still. So now he can obey what God told him to do. And they went down both into the water. Oh, they went there. Both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized them. Now let's see what's take place next. Now he was baptized. And when they were come up out of the water, which is in the desert now. Y'all remember about knowing about the desert? Look it up. Dry place. I've been in the desert. I've been in the desert storm. No water was around. And when they and said, and we read it again, 39. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of God caught away Philip that the eunuch was saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. So in other words, the Philip let him know you don't have to you don't have to deal with him no more because that's the spirit gonna take it from there. He's full of joy because he got the spirit of God in him. So he Philip don't have to teach him no more because he, he he completed the command as far as that. Now on dealing with loving one another, that's what a, the spirit of God gonna teach that eunuch to, continue, to, to understand to love someone because he's standing, he's showing he is reading scripture that the, the two great commandments. But he he got it complete. No, he had to be taught. He said, no, you don't have to you don't have to follow him no more. He got it. Because the Holy Spirit gonna teach him from there. You got all these schools and stuff, and that, it's the Holy Spirit that does the teaching. Okay, let me close for the day. Until the next episode, when we're going to be dealing with water baptism some more. I'm not done. I'm just scratching the surface. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you once again. Thank you for your powerful word. Thank you for you speaking yourself, showing that the gospel and the water baptism are as one. Heavenly Father, I pray that the minds and hearts and souls are open up to understanding what you're telling us to do and to do your will. Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings. And continue to bless me as I continue to teach the word. Heavenly Father, as long as you have me on this side, Heavenly Father, I will push your word forward and would not be ashamed of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day.